Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. We're back again on our pandemic projects. And uh, this time we're going to take on a reel I've never worked on before. So this should be fun all around. This is a Quantum Catalyst PTI. It's the CT20, so it's a 20 size reel. It uh, appears to be a nice reel. Eight ball bearings, very smooth operation. And um, this was part of those uh, flea market fine pandemic pro uh, project previews that I did. Problem is that this reel, no matter how you tighten it down, the drags aren't holding. So we'll find out what's going on in there. But I thought while we did that, we would go ahead and take the whole reel apart and uh, show you how this reel is made. If you have one of these, show you how to service it and uh, kind of play along for fun in terms of uh, learning about this reel. So whenever I do a reel that I don't uh, don't know about, I, I want to go out to the uh, websites that uh, have the schematics and pull one down so I know what I'm looking at. In particular, in this reel, there's something going on in this whole drag column here. So uh, I wanted to see what, what we had there ahead of schedule. I also wanted to get a general idea of what it's going to look like when I open it up underneath uh, so that I'm kind of prepared for this video, if nothing else. I got this from Mike's, Mike's Real Repair. Com. He's up in Vancouver. They have a great library there of all of the, uh, uh, a lot of the manufacturers' reels and going back quite some time. So if you're looking for a schematic and you can't find it on the manufacturer's website, then, uh, then try Mike's or if you're looking for a pen schematic, try uh, MysticParts.com. Um, they're both uh, very good sites for that. Okay, we're going to take the spool off. We'll get to that drag thing last. I want to pull the two shim washers and the click washer. Now we'll pay attention to these these shim washers because that's part of that drag system. And they kind of look like maybe they're worn a little bit. We'll see. I have those go into a parts tray. Those of you that watch these videos regularly know I, uh, I'm a person that just likes to gather all my pieces and parts in a tray as opposed to uh, using some other things that are very successful for other people. I've, uh, I know some folks that uh, lay all of the parts out in the order that they took them off of a reel uh, on a mat, and that's fine. Uh, I've got some suggestions from folks that use an egg carton, and uh, they use each, uh, each one of those uh, little slots where the eggs would be for uh, um, holding parts in sequence, and that's good too. In this case, I'm kind of one of these guys that just likes to put them all in one spot so I know where I'm looking for them. Okay, this looks like a 12 millimeter nut. You've seen me use this tool before. It's a deep 12 millimeter socket with uh, two flat plated screwdrivers. This happens to be a tool for a Mitchell reel. However, uh, if you have a regular uh, deep socket, that's fine. And also, if you don't have a deep socket, go for a wrench. Any anything. I like to, as soon as I break the, uh, the initial hold of the nut, I like to take it off with my hand as opposed to continuing to wrench it. It just seems to give me better control and I know that I'm not uh, having anything break down on me there. Okay, the, ro the rotor should come off now. There you go. You got a rotor, the rotor's clean underneath. And uh, so here's uh, the basic assembly of the top of this reel. And I didn't do it to get to here. I did it because I want to take the case apart. And when I was looking at the case, there's no apparent outside screws other than the screw that's holding the bump guard on here. So the rest of them, it's like, uh, okay, they got to be hiding somewhere. Well, I'm willing to bet that there's one hiding in here, maybe two. And then I believe that the uh, that there was going to be some up top, and sure enough, there is. So we'll uh, we'll take the handle off here. It says it's eight ball bearings. I'm gonna. Uh, I probably could read the schematic and tell you where some of them are, but. Uh, I know, whenever I get up past about four or five, I start uh, losing count or trying to figure out where the heck they really are. All right, so we're just taking the handle out here. I like to put the screw from the handle right back into the, the handle so I don't lose it into the parts tray it goes. Let's find out what's under here. So there's this is a bump guard, and uh, the whole notion behind a bump guard is that if you whack it onto a uh, a pier railing or a, a gun wall on a boat or onto a dock that you don't shatter the case. And uh, this one uh, seems pretty solid. I'm going to take that, I'm going to put the screw from that right back into there. And this is one case where I'm not going to throw it into the bucket. 
because it's a very small screw. All right, one, two, three screws for the case. I'm using a micro screwdriver. These just seem to be small screws. One problem with the micro screwdrivers is that uh, you need some hand strength. But uh, right now these seem to be coming out okay, which good for them. That's two. And I'm laying these on my table. The reason I'm laying them on my table is I want to make sure that they're all the same size screw. Because if one's shorter than the other, and I just did that one, I had a, uh, uh, a Bass Pro reel that I had in and, and the screw that was under the bump guard was shorter than the other screw. So I want to take precautions there that if there is one that's short that I notice where it is. In this case, all three of these screws are the same. I'm just going to leave them again on the back of my board here and move on. Okay, I see that what we've got coming up here is the anti-reverse clutch and the collar that it rides on. So let's just take that off before it falls off. Also looks like there's two little uh, uh, shim washers or, or washers that go between the anti-reverse clutch and the burring here. So uh, duly noted in case those come apart. Now I can remove the case. Looks like uh, we can get the main gear out without taking off the axle. We can. All right, so let's count bearings. And we got one, two, three. They probably count the uh, anti-reverse clutch as four. I'll give myself one here on uh, the line roll, and that's probably five. I'm guessing there's one in the spool at six. We're getting there. Uh, let's take the axle shaft out so we can get back here to the cross line gear. Same idea, small screw, small screwdriver. Now, if you hold the cross line block, now you should be able to pull that axle shaft out, which we just did. Then, as long as we have the small screwdriver, we can pull that uh, cross line block off. And then, I guess I need a little pair of pliers to pull the cross line gear off. There's another one. There's seven on the ball bearings. There's a little ball bearing that uh, this winds up on. So this reel seems to be very clean. A little bit of overflow of some, some grease. But short of that, uh, we'll just do some quick house cleaning here. There's nothing that's really coagulated on it. It does look like the reel's been kept serviced. So uh, we don't need to do too much. Just a, a quick cleaning inside. I use a variety. I use the paper towels. I use cotton swabs. I use a, uh, a little screwdriver like this if I need to get into the channel here and get some of that out. But uh, overall this real appears to be very clean and uh, not needing anything of any consequence there. Okay, we've, uh, we've mentioned bearings. I, I oil bearings, so I'm going to give this a good drink of oil up top here. I have the bearing that goes into the side case. I'm just going to put that right in there. That one came off the main gear. I'll give that a drink of oil there. I got a ball, a ball bearing in the back there, so again, nice drink of oil there. The rest of the moving parts I generally grease. So I'm going to use um, pen precision real grease. Uh, I've said many times I don't care what grease you use, but make sure it's fishing grease, fishing real grease. Okay, well I'm getting the back buttered up. I'm looking at all the teeth, making sure that they're uniform. I don't see any chipped, broken teeth. I'm going to put some on the front of this one too because the cross line block is going to ride on that. And then we're going to seat that right over that uh, burring that was on the case there. Okay, next up then we would take a look at the uh, cross line block. Again, there's a uh, little channel that the stud from the crosswind gear rides in. So you want to make sure that uh, you take out the old grease, put in some new. And we can load that. When you load this, make sure that stud is on the bottom of the gear. Because you, you're going to need clearance. To, most of the time, you're going to need clearance here to, uh, to get the axle attached to that. Because normally, you can't get this out uh, because the axle will be in the way pulling. In this case, this one was able to slide by there, so uh, we're okay. But uh, just out of habit, I'm going to uh, grease this one up. 
Do the same thing. I'm checking the teeth as I'm putting some grease on. This one was clean. If anything about this reel was dry as opposed to uh, overly uh, oiled or greased. I'm going to put the main gear back in. I'm going to grab this. You want to make sure it's clean. I use a little 4-0 steel wall just to, to get anything that might be stuck off of there. And put a light coating. Don't go crazy on the shaft. A light coating of grease. And I've said this uh, a couple of times for those that watch. This is a very tight tolerance up here. And if you put too much grease in, all it's going to do is clog it. Eventually it'll dry. And when it dries, then your, your performance of the reel is going to bog down. Okay, there's a little uh, beveled screw that goes back in there to hold the cross wind in place. So it's, it, this isn't anything crazy in terms of technological design. It's pretty straightforward and uh, seems like it's good. It's time to close this side up then. We've uh, taken that off. We're just going to lay that side plate right back on again. We put the bearing into the side case there. And that just fit in nice and easy. So. That's the way it should go on. If you ever find that these are binding on you, if you can't get it shut all the way, if, uh, if it seems like it's hard to get a screw in, uh, those kinds of things, stop, take it apart again, go, you know, give it a good look over in terms of what might be stuck where, and, uh, and then go put it back together again. If you force the thing, chances are you're going to crack the case or you're going to uh, damage an internal part. And I've seen that happen a lot. For example, we just did that uh, crosswind block, making sure that it's on the stud. I've seen it where folks have uh, uh, didn't have it on the stud and they ran it all the way up and then they cracked the case because they, you weren't uh, driving it properly. All right, I just put the, the uh, bump guard back on. Notice there's a little tag there. It goes in the hole. And then we can get to this side of it, which is the one screw that is visible on this reel, on the external case. So, kind of good engineering here. Screws tend to rust and rot with um, uh, water. So if you can hide all your screws, you're probably in better shape with that. All right, and then we had this little setup here. We've got a uh, two little rings. We have the collar for the... Um, uh, the anti-reverse bearing, and then we have the anti-reverse bearing. I'm going to try to keep it all together as I do this. If not, I'll uh, take them apart each way. But this is a great, uh, great place to look at a schematic if you uh, if you get stuck and say, "What am I working on?" Well, here it is, right here. You have the collar, you have those rings, you have that um, internal uh, sleeve, and then you have the bearing, which I showed you that we oiled. If you want to take that out, there's three screws that hold that bearing in place, and you can do it that way if you needed to replace. Actually, you can see two of those, uh, one of those screws here. The other two are underneath that assembly. Okay, so that's uh, that's the body of the reel. I kind of like what I see. We've got it all oiled up, and um, we're going to go ready, ready to go fishing here. This is one of those uh, anti-reverse reels that does have an override. Uh, so I would say that cost them a couple of dollars to do that. Uh, most of the um, modern day reels with the anti-reverse don't have the override because it's easy to put that single clutch in there. And I just gave it a spin and it's spinning nicely. So we're going to go up top and we're going to go try and figure out what's going on with that, uh, the drag washers. Right after we put the handle in. So grabbing the handle. set up here. Now this is where the beauty of a parts tray comes in because as I'm putting the handle on I'm thinking all I should see in there right now is the, the washer and the spool assembly and that's not the case because I see the little tie down for the, uh, the spool nut so there you go. So this is kind of paid dividends already in that uh, I don't have to come back later and say gosh I forgot that. So you tighten down your nut, align the holes. I've got those two little screws here. People that watch me know that I have issues with little pieces and parts, but the micro screwdriver with the grease, one of the tips that somebody passed along, does tend to work. So it kind of holds it a little bit as a magnet while we're doing this. And then we can put uh, both of those tie down screws in. 
and uh, we'll move on to see what's going on up top there. Oops, well, my problems with small pieces continue. Through every fault of my own. There you go. All right, so there's this last one of these. We got the collar. Get, this, get that in there. I don't like these. These seem like maybe this is the cause of the problem. But let's uh, let's go up top and see what we got here first, and then we'll come back. Oh, oh there's a problem right there. Uh, this is cracked. But that's oh, let's see. So let's grab a pick and let's get this uh, out. I'm going to just use a little thin screwdriver here. You can work it behind the, the clip that holds the uh, the dry washers in. Now, even though this is cracked, it shouldn't have too much of a problem. This is kind of a pressure plate. The um, back end of this button here is pressing down on this to compress to the drag washer that's really doing the work. So even though it's cracked, I'll, well, I'll find a replacement for it, but even though it's cracked, that shouldn't... Well, this is the problem. I, I can see this already. Okay, this should be a drag washer there. So let's go up to the spool. So here's your diagram. So this must be the piece that crack because it's thicker in the diagram. Then we have a thin washer. And then we have a, a metal washer with the ears on it. Ah! Bearing! Bearing. We found another bearing. And then we have a spool bearing. Uh, so right now what I'm seeing is this and this. I'm not seeing this piece here. So I don't know if we, we don't have one or if it's out of sequence. So let's go. Up. Oh, it's out of sequence. There you go. So what was happening here is this one was laying in the bottom and it wasn't getting the right uh, torque to hold down the spool. This is the this is the spool hold down. The ears go in here, and it actually becomes part of the spool. And then you have a drag washer, which puts the various pressure on it to keep the spool stabilized or tightened down. And then you have something, in this case, a broken piece here, that uh, puts the pressure on it. And when you pancake it, then you've it pretty much have stopped up the spool from spinning, uh, but that's not the case here at the moment. So we've got to go find a, uh, a replacement. And I have I have a keepsake here. I have a catch-all. I have whatever you want to call it. Whenever reels fail, uh, there's generally a spool. It's got some bearings and things in there. It's got a bearing. It's got uh, here's a felt washer. Here's some. Uh, tie downs, all that stuff. So just throw it in one place. I'm going to see if I can't find something. Oh, here we go. So here's a metal washer. That looks like it's about the same size as the, uh, the other. Yeah, it's pretty close. I think we can use that. Just checking for another one. See, maybe there's one that's got a smaller hole to it. This one might be perfect. Ah, just a little bit too small. So this might take me a minute or two to, to look through. I think the one that I have laid out there seems to be okay. There's one more we can try. That's pretty close. All right. Well, we'll come back to it if it becomes a problem. But right now, I think that uh, whatever reel that uh, that came from. Right, um, I guess that's worth it. Uh, let me go. Ooh, here you go. So I'm also going to pick out two pieces I just did to replace these because I'm not sure if that's really getting the job done there. So uh, let's take this one, put that back in the kitty for another day. It's a shame this one. This one was probably almost dead on, just a little bit short. Oh well, we'll use this one. Now this one is a hard washer, so it doesn't matter if that's plastic or metal. That's not the washer that's doing the work in the drag stack. It's that uh, red washer there that's doing all the work. And this is a uh, hard fabric washer. It doesn't need any kind of uh, oil or grease on it. 
I'm just I'm feeling grit, so it's actually possible that it came out of this. All right, so according to that then, what we want to do is we want to put that eared washer in first. We had the red one down below there. Then we want to put the red one in. Now that white one would be next, but we don't have a white one, so I'm going to use this. It's about the same thickness. I'll put that in the middle there. Then we're going to take the two washers that I just found instead of these black ones, in case that's the problem. Put that on the, uh, the tree there, so to speak. Get the little tie-down clip. Let me install that into the spool. Spool on. This is the moment of truth, I guess. Let's see if this fixes the problem. Oops. There you go. Uh, I think I have enough quite right. Okay, there we go. Oh, we have lockdown. Look at that. Nice. There it is. So, there's two potential culprits here. One of them is the back end washers here that go on top of the click ratchet. The other is the broken uh, uh, press washer. But, Regardless, I mean, we can turn it a little bit, not much, and uh, that would be called max drag when you can put a certain amount of pressure to move that. But this is an inshore reel. This is a 20 size reel. You shouldn't have a whole lot of uh, max drag in this thing to begin with. You only have one, one drag washer in there, so uh, it should be at some point you can release on that. So uh, there you go. Catalyst uh, CT20 PTI. Eight ball bearings, we counted seven. It might be one in a handle. I'd, you know, one of these days, maybe I'll go back and I'll, I'll take a look here and see, uh, see what that answer might be. But uh, right now, you got a nice reel that uh, was just problematic. So interestingly enough, the, the fellow that I bought these from on uh, Facebook contacted me. Uh, he's interested in having the reel back if, uh, if I can solve that uh, problem with the drags, and we just solved it. So. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll contact him and we'll work something out about uh, about getting it back to him. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, it's an interesting reel. I've shown you how to take it apart, showed you the step-by-step -step process to service the bottom as well as the top. We solved the problem with the uh, the drag washer and maybe some of the explanation in there was new to you in terms of how that works. Uh, folks ask me, do I service reels? Sometimes they watch these videos and they become uh, convinced that it's not the right thing for them to do. They'd rather have somebody else do it. And the answer is yes, I do service the reels. If you are interested, my contact information is uh, on the business card that follows. Uh, send me an email or give me a ring and I'll be happy to discuss that with you. And uh, if this, uh, if you have this reel in pieces and parts, you have a problem with it, give me a call. Uh, we'll try and walk you through it. If you have another reel that you're working on that uh, you just can't seem to, to get right in terms of a fix, then uh, leave a comment, and I'll see if I can help you that way as well. So this is Dennis with, Ch uh, with Second Chance Tackle. This is a pandemic project. We're still going through the, uh, the problems of this virus. I ask all of you to stay well, stay in, stay healthy, be smart, listen to the folks that are telling us what to do. And yes, we will get through it, and we will get back fishing again. So uh, thanks again. Have a great evening.